Hi, I'm Kiana Rush. This is week eight of pharmacology tutoring for Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. And today we're gonna to be talking about drugs for gout. So these images depict gout. It most commonly affects the big toe. And when these crystals of uric acid build up, they're actually called tophies. And it'll be called tophaceous gout when these crystals of uric acid form. Patients usually have pain that is worse in the evening. And there's three strategies for treatment. The first strategy is to reduce inflammation. So in acute inflammation, you can use NSAIDs or glucocorticoid. In chronic inflammation, you can use colchicine. We're gonna learn about colchicine. Another way to treat gout is by accelerating the renal excretion of uric acid. That's a good way to treat it, right? It's getting more of that uric acid out of the body so that it can't build up in the joints. And a drug that does that is probenicid. The third way to treat gout is by reducing the conversion of purines to uric acid by xanthine oxidase. Okay, only two drugs to learn this week for gout. The first one we're gonna learn is colchicine. So in this image, this thing I just circled, that is actually a gout crystal in the tissue. All of these things surrounding the crystal, those dark purple stained things, here's another one over here. Here's the crystal. And all these little dark purple guys, these are macrophages. And as you can see, there's a lot of macrophages surrounding the crystal. Colchicine will actually work by inhibiting the macrophage assembly, so it shuts down the amount of macrophages that can be made. Macrophages also recruit a lot of other inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF-alpha, IL-8, lots of things that cause inflammation. So by having less macrophages made, we're actually going to inhibit inflammation, and the patient will feel better. Their gout crystal is not going to go away, but it will feel less painful. Some side effects are diarrhea and liver and kidney damage. And it's very important that you don't use this drug in patients with um, liver or kidney damage that's pre-existing. The next drug we're gonna talk about is allopurinol. This is a good one to know. So this will work by inhibiting an enzyme called xanthine oxidase. Xanthine oxidase will take xanthine, which is a breakdown of purine metabolism, and it will stop that from being made into uric acid. So not only is this drug useful in gout, it's also useful in chemotherapy as an adjunctive treatment so the patients don't have all those gout side effects and all of those side, of side effects from DNA breakdown. So allopurinol will inhibit xanthine oxidase and less uric acid will be made. And over time, that will actually reduce the amount of gout crystals a patient has as well, because it's reducing uric acid in the body. So this can be used in chronic gout, adjunctive therapy to cancer, chemotherapy, and a side effect that I think is important to know is bone marrow suppression. So another word for that is pancytopenia. So that means the blood cells are going to be low. The white blood cells will be low. The red blood cells will be low. Platelets will be low. So the patients are at risk for infection, bleeding, lots of bad things as a side effect of allopurinol. Um, similar to colchicine, you can't use this in people who have liver problems. And also you can't use allopurinol in patients with chronic heart failure. Okay. If you guys have any questions about gout drugs, feel free to send me an email. Happy studying.